Is that where we are? Yes. <laughs> good, good. Ooh, had trouble getting on today. Hey, I got to ask you, why does everybody try to make fall food seem so gross? Instead of trying to scare people uh, with your food for just one day in October, how about exciting them with great fall flavors for the entire season? Because I've got 21 great flavors of fall that you can put into your cooking today and we can all stop this ghoulish fall food abuse uh, today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. This is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern time. If you're looking for past videos, go to my archive on Facebook, facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. Take note of the published schedule. Tuesdays at noon is the Carefree Cooks Code. Thursdays at 6 p.m. East is our new cook and chat along. So much fun. Really, really cool. Just like a, an idea I had one day and it's turning into a movement. And what I do is I take cooking sessions, lessons from a year or more ago, and then I'm there to chat. So you want to be there 6 p.m. on Thursday. Also, uh, you can go to Instagram, see what I've been cooking. Chef Todd Moore on Instagram, instagram.com slash Chef Todd Moore. This was a mind-blowing. It's rockfish season here on the northern neck of Virginia, uh, which just makes up for your sadness. The crab season has ended, but this is a piece of local rockfish with a bourbon burr blanc and almond butter uh, uh, Brussels sprouts. Almond butter sauteed Brussels sprouts. See the picture, well, you just did on Instagram. Why? How can I do stuff like that? Well, you could do it too. You're a carefree cook. You bring friends and family together, right? You, you learn every time you cook. You wind up creating your own cooking style. All because you practice pro methods, you wind up loving your cooking. Oh, <laughs> I, I outsmarted the tech problems today. I was anticipating it. A few weeks ago, we had this terrible tech problem where I just could not get on Facebook. So I practiced. I got a workaround. I pulled that out of my back pocket today. And aha, uh -huh, we're on. So proud of myself. Uh, but look, we need to have a serious talk. All right. You need to stop playing with your food. I, I, somebody has to represent the food at this time of year. I, I, I'm like the Lorax or, or, or something. Somebody has to speak for the food. I mean, if you think it's the season for tricks and treats, that should not give you the ghoulish notion that you can make all your food look disgusting and still think people are going to want to eat it. <laughs> Let's talk about making food taste like fall instead of looking like Halloween today, all right? But first, I've got a true or false for you today with a fall theme. Tell me in the comments section directly below, is this statement true or false? Store potatoes with an apple to delay them from sprouting. True or false? Tell me in the comments section below. Okay. We all know how great it is when spring comes around, right? And suddenly the freshest vegetables are available for you because spring cooking means all the fruit, all the tomatoes, all those leafy greens. You head to your farmer's market for the highest quality local foods and you make your cooking that much brighter, that much healthier. You're very excited about it. It's really cool. And everyone agrees what summer cooking is all about. Well, summer cooking is about outdoors, on the grill, right? It's simple food. But it, it, if you 
burn it on the grill, then it's okay. Summer cooking is perhaps the most forgiving time of year. And in the U.S., it's the hamburgers and the hot dogs, the corn on the cob, the potato salad, the coleslaw. And then everybody understands what winter cooking is about also. That's when the holidays come around. That's when you put the whole bird in the oven. That's when you're roasting things. That's when you're making pies and cakes and cookies and breads and rolls. There's just a, there's a warmth to winter cooking. But that leaves fall. Why is fall the gross out time of the year? I mean, I don't carve a scary face into my head of lettuce in the spring. I don't make my hamburgers look like brains or I don't feel compelled to make my hot dogs look like severed fingers in the summer. Do you? No. (laughs) Why do we abuse food so badly in the fall? I mean, it can't just be because of Halloween, right? And, And if it's all just for Halloween, okay, I understand. If you want to scare people with your gross out cooking and you're cooking for one specific day, all right, go for it. But That's not what you can do for the entire season. This fall cooking season, how about concentrating on the tastes and flavors? Those things that are gonna shock your tongue instead of the scary sights, the visual surprises that everybody focuses on. In other words, let's amaze our taste buds instead of frightening our eyes. So today, I've got 20 fall flavors that should uh, you should be putting into your cooking right away. And I'll give you some quick ideas. We'll kind of rapid fire through these things, but I want to tell you about some of these ingredients that you should be substituting from your summer cooking, from your spring cooking, from your winter cooking. Now, I admit, I advertised it as 21. There were 21, um, but I am so sick of pumpkin spice, it's banned. Banned forever. No pumpkin spice. So, there's back to 20. But look, there are a lot of ways that your cooking can say fall without saying gross out. Okay? So let's start thinking about the things that you cook normally. Maybe you can add some of these ingredients of fall in there. Let's start with an apple. Uh, Certainly baked goods, that's easy. But do you ever do poached apples? Maybe poached apples with some honey on it as a dessert? You can roast apples in the oven. They get a little caramely good and soft. You can puree them in soups. That's actually a thickening agent. How about using applesauce as a thickening agent and a sweetener in some kind of sauce or casserole? Apples are way more than just cutting them into pieces. Think about how you might use an apple puree or applesauce as a thickening agent or in a casserole. Speaking of which, how about apple cider? Uh, instead of wine this time of year, how about an apple cider for deglazing? How about uh, apple cider for steaming items in? Apple cider as a poaching liquid or just to thin out some uh, already thickened soups. A great flavor of fall that you could just change the wine or the chicken broth that you use another time of year and just make it apple cider now. Same method, different ingredients for the new season. Um, I got to say that bacon is a flavor of fall. It's the smoky, it's the smokehouse, uh, you know, way back when, when hogs were slaughtered in the fall and that's when you started butchering and smoking things and preserving them. Um, you can use rendered bacon fat for saute. You wanna put a, a little more umami in a, a saute dish or a stir fry, start with bacon fat instead of butter or olive oil. Um, bacon, great, crumbled as a garnish, gives you that crunchy te- texture, that smoky flavor. Um, wrapping things in bacon, par cooking the bacon, and then wrapping chicken, chicken livers, scallops, anything that you want. Great thing to do in the fall. A uh, great flavor of fall is beer. <laughs> it's a great flavor all year round, but now I'm talking about cooking because you can use beer again for deglazing. If you're gonna deglaze a pan with a grape, with wine, or chicken broth or something, why not deglaze it with a grain, a a, a fermented grain? So imagine the barley that goes into a beer. Imagine using darker beers, like a Guinness or a a Newcastle Stout or something that have a, a little bit more, or an IPA, something that's a little bit more bitter. You're going to add that to your pan sauces. You can steam things in beer. Um, When I do ribs, I'll poach my ribs for a good hour or so in beer first, render a lot of that fat, and then either smoke them or grill them. 
Um, it, it, it's a batter ingredient also. Think about adding beer batters to fall. It's a great flavor of fall. Uh, another one of my favorites is to start burning butter uh, this time of year. Unacceptable the rest of the year, but brown butter at fall, great for saute. You can make a brown butter sauce for pasta. Brown butter sauce for vegetables gives it that, that toasty, that darker, that, that deeper kind of sense of fall. Um, brown butter also, I do one of my favorite dishes of fall. I do a butternut squash ravioli in a brown butter sauce. Okay, so it sounds complicated. The, the butternut squash ravioli, I've, I've done tons of videos on that. Uh, it's in my fall cooking is cozy program as well. But really, it just comes down to browning the butter, put, not burning it. You don't want it black, but you put the butter in the pan. You go past where you normally would for a saute when it starts to get a little bit brown, and then you throw the rav ravioli in there. So I call it a sauce, but it's really just sauteed in brown butter. Sometimes I'll mount it with some cream at the end. Um, chai or tea really good this time of year. Every flavor of tea that you can think of black tea, green teas, red teas. There's just such a rainbow of different teas all bringing their different flavors. And again, this is the time to substitute your liquids. This is for deglazing. This is for steaming. Imagine a chai poached apple sliced and served with your grilled pork chop. There's a lot of fall in there, right? It's a poaching liquid. It can be put in soups for flavor as well. Um, it wouldn't surprise you that cranberry is a great flavor of fall. Cranberries in baked goods, cranberries pureed, poached and pureed can be a thickening agent. And of course, cranberry in your side dishes with rices, with grains, uh, all kinds of things that you can mix in there with salads as well. Fig, <clears throat> great flavor of fall. Fig baked goods. Uh, fig in, again, puree for sauces, figs added with nuts, fig, nut, and grain. How about an almond fig brown rice, right? Flavorful, smoky. Start putting these things in here. Um, figs for side dishes, figs for dessert, red wine poached figs, fig tarts. Um, you could even do fig muffins when you get into baking. Great flavor of fall. Ginger. Also a good flavor of fall. It's a wonderful aromatic for saute. If you're using garlic and onion all year long, use fresh ginger instead. And in my dinner done program, I show you how to pickle the ginger because the problem is you buy this big thing of, of fresh ginger root and you only need that much and the rest of it goes bad. Slice it, put it in a jar with half and half water, vinegar, some sugar, anything else you want. It'll last weeks, if not months. Um, great for soups. Great in potatoes. Have you ever tried ginger potatoes? Wonderful with grains. We just did fried rice last night. Uh, ginger always goes in there for, for my brown rices, for barley, gingered barley, uh, gingered quinoa, things like that. Wonderful in the fall. Uh, then we come into our nuts, hazelnuts, excellent for fall. Hazelnuts, I love with a vegetable, string beans with hazelnuts, but let's not forget pecans, walnuts, all these others, obviously in baked goods, great in casseroles. If you're doing your string bean casserole, you're doing a potato casserole, chopped nuts garnished on top adds a texture uh, and another flavor to it. Roasted nuts uh, as a vegetable garnish. Uh, again, I love to do Brussels sprouts. I, I just showed you the Instagram Brussels sprouts with almond butter. So I took some toasted almonds, diced them quickly in the Cuisinart, like vit, 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 made a little dust out of it, and then sauteed them in the butter, making like an almond pan butter, and then go in the pre-steamed Brussels sprouts so they're already kind of soft. Almond butter Brussels sprouts, really, really awesome. So all the nuts come out this time. <laughs> all, all, all the nuts come out this time of year when they get really passionate about fall cooking. What else we got? Um, how about maple? Oh my goodness, uh, maple mashed potatoes. Uh, maple bourbon chicken that, that I always make. Uh, maple in grains, brown rice with some maple in it. It's just crazy how many things that you can add that immediately say sauces to you. Don't save it just for the pancakes, you know? Um, this goes into casseroles, maple in pureed soups, butternut squash and maple soup, acorn squash and maple soup. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, pear, it's another great flavor of fall. Again, in baked goods, poached pears are fantastic. Um, 
Oh my goodness, my mouth watering. There's so many things that you can do. A small diced pear, like brunoise of pear, in with a, a grain salad, quinoa, uh, brown rice, a uh, 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 Long grain rice, so just mix them all up, you know, with diced up pears. Oh my goodness, it's so good. And again, an excellent flavor pureed for soups. Uh, pomegranate, pomegranate's great in baked goods. It's an excellent poaching liquid. It does color your items, but it adds a, a unique sweet tartness to it as well. And the pomegranate seeds are great for garnish on a plate as well. Uh, I would even call red wine a flavor of fall, and we know what we do with that. We deglaze things with it, we steam with it, and it's a poaching liquid for these pears, for these apples, for figs, pardon, all these things that I just mentioned. Uh, try poaching uh, fruit in red wine. It's, it's remarkable what you can come up with. Drizzle honey over it, add some whipped cream to it if you want, uh, crumbled up cookies, uh, anything that you want on there. Uh, when you're poaching these flavors of fall, these unique fruits of fall, it opens up a whole another world to you. L let's talk about some of the seasonings as well. Here's just the flavors, and I think we're only up to 15 or so. So let's talk about allspice. Uh, if you haven't used this before, get yourself a little jar and experiment with it. it it's very powerful, okay? It, it is, and it's not all spices mixed together. This is a misnomer. People think all spices, all spices. No, it is It is a, a berry onto itself, like a, a peppercorn kind of thing. Wonderful on beef, great on lamb. Uh, the things that are a little bit more gamey, fantastic on mushrooms, mushrooms with all spice, really good in your stew. Just a little pinch because it's really powerful and it can overtake something. But when you get that hint of, of allspice, nobody can identify it unless they're a chef or something. Nobody goes, oh, you put allspice in your stew. But they'll go, wow, that's interesting. Um, it's obvious I couldn't leave cinnamon out. Cinnamon baked goods. Cinnamon is, is a great rub for game. Anyone that, that has a wild game, it, it takes the gaminess out of, out of it. You put it in, as part of your dry rub. Cinnamon potatoes are really good. Cinnamon and chili for my friends in Cincinnati. That's a Cincinnati chili. And the same thing with allspice, a little touch of cinnamon in your stew as well. Cloves. I hate them, but that's just me. I don't know why. It never, never seems to agree with me when I eat things with cloves or clove spices or like a, a um, Chinese uh, five spice mix has clove in it. Uh, but if you like cloves or if you're not sure if you like them or not, don't just go that I hate them, <laughs> but they're great in potatoes, wonderful in vegetables. Cloves and poultry is really good. Cloves in sauces, cloves uh, with an onion piquet. That's where you take uh, milk or liquid and you take half an onion, a bay leaf, and a clove, and you tack it to um, the, the bay leaf to the onion, and you simmer them in the milk. It's called onion piquet. A uh, clove, by the way, comes from uh, ancient Greek or Roman uh, for clava, which was nail, because cloves look like nails. Nonetheless, uh, nutmeg. Can't get through the holidays without nutmeg, nutmeg potatoes, nutmeg on a vegetables, nutmeg compound butters and compound fats, nutmeg in sauces, nutmeg in drinks, in hot drinks, in whipped cream, in compound fats, things like that that I just mentioned. Uh, I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> I just, I'm just like reeling them off. In front of me, I just have the list of what they are. I'm like making this up. Where are we? Uh, rosemary. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can just smell rosemary right now. Rosemary and beef, rosemary and lamb, rosemary and pork, rosemary and game. This is the time of year for those roasts with rosemary all over it. Rosemary potatoes, uh, rosemary in sauces. This is an herb uh, that is so hearty and so stiff that it, it macerates very well also. Um, rosemary butter, rosemary infused olive oil, things like that because it's so strong. It, it just adds, it just gets in your nose and it says fall to me. Sage goes with that as well. Uh, sage for beef, sage for poultry. Your turkey is definitely going to need some sage. If you get fresh sage leaves, stuff it in the cavity of your turkey. Just let that aromatic nature go about. Sage potatoes add a fall flavor to your potatoes and your grains as well. Lastly is thyme. 
spread time everywhere. Just throw it all over your kitchen. Whatever it lands on, it's going to work. On beef, on poultry, on pork, game, potatoes, uh, sauces. I love rosemary thyme roasted potatoes in the oven. Take the small, either chef white potatoes or even roasted red bee potatoes, uh, and cut them into quarters, rinse them well, dry them on, on towels, coat them with oil and then dried a sage thyme uh, and rosemary, roast them in the oven. Your whole house smells like fall. And you know what? I am going to give you that one more back. I, I advertised it as 21 and then I knocked off the pumpkin spice because it's obnoxious. Everybody's sick of pumpkin spice, but I need to give you one more flavor to bring it back to 21. So I'm going to include mustard. I love mustard in the fall, whole grain mustard. It goes so well with all these other things I mentioned, mustard and maple, mustard and apples, mustard brown butter, mustard bacon, just about everything else I mentioned goes really well with mustard. Whole grain mustard on greens, on Brussels sprouts, whole grain mustard on mushrooms. It, it brings a fall flavor that your basic yellow hot dog mustard from the summer just can't bring to fall. So there they are. There's 21 of them, 21 flavors of fall that you can start to put into your cooking right away. You don't change the methods for fall. Don't, don't change the cooking method. Just change the ingredients. You, you, you just, like your clothes, you, you change with the season, your, your ingredients. You don't stop getting dressed because there's a new season. You know, you're still wearing clothes. You're wearing different clothes. You don't change the methods in cooking for a new season. You just change the ingredients that you're using these methods for. And just because it's fall, it doesn't mean that the nine steps in the basic saute method are going to change. It, it never changes. That never changes. That's why they're dependable, repeatable methods. Methods are always the same, but when you apply the methods to new ingredients, then it does make something new. Then it ups your creativity for sure. So look, in trying, instead of trying to make your fall food look like one scary day in October, how about making it taste like the entire season by using the flavors of fall that are delicious and not scary? <laughs> now is not the time to scare people with food. But now is the time for our Carefree Cooks community. I haven't done this in a few weeks because I've been having long lessons. Let's peek into the Carefree Cooks community, our private Facebook community uh, in, uh, uh, for lifetime members of web cooking classes. Let's see who's already using the flavors of fall. First, oh, nicely done, Maureen. Maureen went looking for some flavors of fall and she found them in my Dinner Done program. There is a dish there called Hunter Style Pork Chaucer one of my favorites for the fall. And she says that she took notes during the class, always a good idea to do, and the sauce was OMG incredible. That was her words. Nicely done, Maureen, a nice looking dish. Uh, Julie is eating some really fresh salmon lately. Uh, she is getting fresher salmon than a bear standing in a stream. How about that? <laughs> Here, it's a wild-caught sockeye with a whiskey maple mustard sauce. I mean, did she know what I was going to be talking about today? Let me say that again. Whiskey maple mustard sauce. That's fall. <laughs> uh, you know, John didn't tell us much about this. John's a man of few words, uh, but it sure looks pretty good. Stick to the ribs, hearty, fall hearty kind of thing. John wrote, beef stew. That's all he said. But you know, maybe that's all that's needed to be said. <laughs> that looks really good. Uh, Danielle was with us for last Thursday's beef stroganoff cook and chat event that I was telling you about. And I love the fact that she watched the class, took a deep breath, went ahead, and she just totally carefreed this dish. She says that she has never made it before. She used to use box mixes for beef stroganoff, never made it herself. And we all know the difference, right? The difference between her boxed mixes and this gorgeous meal is that now she has a method to depend on that gives her confidence. Methods over recipes. How many decades have I been saying this? I'm telling you, methods over recipes is a way more empowering way to cook. Uh, Judy is also using unique flavors of fall. This is fantastic. An acorn squash, 
tough, ugly thing, right? Everybody avoids them in the fall. But if you get past the tough skin, man, there's some deliciousness underneath. But she has really plussed it up. She's got sausage in here, apples, nutmeg, cinnamon, maple syrup, brown rice. It, it, it's, it must have tasted like leaves fallen from the tree. It has so much flavor in it. Nicely done, Judy. Really nicely done. You know, I'm not sure why this is such a revelation to so many people, but fall cooking is different than any other season. It's not summer cooking. It's not winter cooking. It's not the same cooking as in the spring. Fall cooking has methods and flavors all its own. And as soon as you embrace the changes that your cooking needs to make for fall, the more variety that you're going to have for the changing seasons. And that's what it comes down to, expanding your variety. But before, let's get to, to the true or false today. What do you think? Uh, store apples, uh, store potatoes with an apple, keeps them from sprouting? Sounds like an old wives' tale, doesn't it? Sounds like one of those things. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it is. Um, store your potatoes with an apple to avoid early sprouting. Keep them away from onions, though, okay? So potatoes go in a cool, dark place. That's why there was always the root cellar way back when. Cool, dark place, not the refrigerator. The ethylene gas that an apple puts off delays potatoes from seeking the dirt again. But it does the opposite for onions. It, it makes them sprout. So keep them separate. Hey, if you know someone who's abusing fall foods, they're making them scary instead of making them delicious, please like this video. Please share it with them and get them on the right path to great fall cooking. And you know, one of the best whys that I can think of for cooking this time of year is adding that variety, putting new meals. You're cooking the same way, but suddenly it's a new and exciting meal for you and your family. And I can show you how to bring five times more variety and five times more flavor into your cooking by using just one powerful pro kitchen practice that I teach in culinary school. And when you go to webcookingclasses.com slash five times, you can register for this free class this week that's going to empower you to just take one. You just take one of your common everyday dishes and you'll be able to turn it into five new ones quickly and easily. So until next Tuesday at noontime, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a non-scary method to your cooking success. Bye everyone.